What is software maintenance? In this video, we are going to see about what is software maintenance. It is impossible to produce systems of any size which do not need to be changed. Over the lifetime of a system, its original requirements will be modified to reflect changing user and customer needs. The system's environment will change as new hardware is introduced. Errors undiscovered during system validation may emerge and require repair. The process of changing a system after it has been delivered and is in use is called software maintenance. The changes may involve simple changes to correct coding errors, more extensive changes to correct design errors, or significant enhancements to correct specification errors or accommodate new requirements. Maintenance, therefore, in this context, really means evolution. It is a process of changing a system to maintain its ability to survive. There are three different types of software maintenance with very blurred distinctions between them. Corrective maintenance. It is concerned with fixing reported errors in the software. Coding errors are usually relatively cheap to correct. Design errors are more extensive as they may involve the rewriting of several program components. Requirement errors are the most expensive to repair because of the extensive system redesign which may be necessary. Adaptive Maintenance It means changing the software to some new environment such as a different hardware platform or for use with the different operating system requirements. The software functionality does not radically change. Perfect maintenance. It involves implementation new functional or non-functional system requirements. These are generated by software customers as their organization or business changes. The cost of adding functionality to a system after it has been put into operation are usually much greater than providing similar functionality when software is originally developed. There are a number of reasons for this. Maintenance staffs are often relatively inexperienced and unfamiliar with the application domain. Maintenance has a poor image among software engineers. The programs being maintained may have been developed many years ago without modern software engineering techniques. They may be unstructured and optimized for efficiency rather than understandability. Changes made to a program may introduce new faults which trigger further change requests. New faults may be introduced because the complexity of the system may make it difficult to assess the effort of a change. As the system is changed, its structure tends to degrade. This makes the system harder to understand and makes further changes difficult as the program becomes less cohesive. The links between a program and its associated documentation are sometimes lost during the maintenance process. The documentation may therefore be unreliable aid to program understanding. Maintenance Process In this video, we are going to see about maintenance process. The maintenance process is triggered by a set of change requests from system users, management or customers. The cost impact of these changes are assessed. If the proposed changes are accepted, a new release of the system is planned. 
This release will usually involve elements of adaptive, corrective and perfective maintenance. The changes are implemented and validated and a new version of the system is released. The process then iterates with a new set of changes proposed for the new release. The figure shows the overview of the maintenance process. Change requests sometimes related to system problems that must be tackled urgently. For example, a fault in a customer system may have to be quickly remedied to allow normal business to continue. The natural ten This emergency repair approach is sometimes necessary if the reported problems affect system availability. However, the danger of this approach is that design documents are not updated. The code and the design gradually become out of step. It is difficult to avoid this happening because maintenance engineers may be pressurized to deal with new emergency fixes to the software. It is then difficult for his or her replacement to retrofit the necessary design changes. A further problem with emergency system repairs is that they have to be completed as quickly as possible. A workable solution rather than the best solution as far as the system structure is concerned may be chosen. This accelerates the process of software aging so that future changes become progressively more difficult. Rather than viewing maintenance as a separate process, it should normally be considered as an iteration of the development process. New requirements must be formulated and validated, components of the system must be redesigned and implemented, and part or all of the system must be tested. This implies a process model. The development process that is used should be the normal software process used in the organization. If prototyping of the proposed changes is necessary, this should be carried out as a part of the change analysis process. This iterative development process is effective when changes are not urgent and can be batched. If emergency code repairs have to be carried out, the problems of document inconsistency and degraded structure can be avoided. If the change request for the repair remains outstanding after the code faults have been fixed. Reverse Engineering In this video, we are going to see about reverse engineering. Software reverse engineering is the process of recovering the design and the requirement specification of a product from an analysis of its code. The purpose of reverse engineering is to facilitate maintenance work by improving the understandability of a system and to produce the necessary documents for a legacy system. Reverse engineering is becoming important since legacy software products lack proper documentation and are highly unstructured. Even well-designed products become legacy software as their structure degrades through a series of maintenance efforts. The first stage of reverse engineering usually focuses on carrying out cosmetic changes to the code to improve its readability, structure and understandability without changing any of its functionalities. A way to carry out these cosmetic changes is shown schematically in figure. A program can be reformatted using any of the several available pretty printer programs which lay out the program neatly. Many legacy software products are difficult to comprehend with complex control structure and unthoughtful variable names. Assigning meaningful variable names is important because meaningful variable names are the most helpful code documentation. All variables, data structure and function should be assigned meaningful names wherever possible. Complex nested conditionals in the program can be replaced by simpler conditional statements or whenever appropriate by case statements. 
After the cosmetic changes have been carried out on our legacy software, the process of extracting the code, design and the requirement specification can begin. These activities are schematically shown in figure. In order to extract the design, a full understanding of the code is needed. Some automatic tools can be used to derive the data flow and control flow diagram from the code. The structured chart, module invocation sequence and data interchange among modules should also be extracted. The SRS document can be written once the full code has been thoroughly understood and the design extracted. Software Re-Engineering In this video, we are going to see about Software Re-Engineering. Introduction Re-Engineering means to re-implement systems to make them more maintainable. In re-engineering, the functionality and system architecture remains the same, but it includes re-documenting, organizing and restricting, modifying and updating the system. It is the solution to the problems of system evolution. The re-engineering approach attacks five parameters, namely Management philosophy Pride Policy Procedures Practices Those bring in radical improvements impacting cost, quality, service and speed. When re-engineering principles are applied to business process, then it is called Business Process Re-Engineering BRP. Principles of Software Re-Engineering The principles of re-engineering when applied to software development processes are called Software Re-Engineering. It affects positively software cost, quality, service to the customer and speed of delivery. Software, whether a product or system, deals with business processes making them faster, smarter and automatic in response to delivery and execution. In software re-engineering, we may resort to one or more of the following. Redefining software scope and goals Redefining RDD and SRS by way of additions, deletions and extensions of functions and features Redesigning the application design and architecture using new technology, upgrades and platforms Interfacing to new technology to make the process faster, smarter and automatic Restoring to data restructuring, improving database design, code restructuring to make the size smaller and more efficient in operations. Rewriting the documentation to make it more user friendly. Re engineering process. Possible re engineering process. The input to the process is a legacy program. And the output is a structured, modularized version of the same program. At the same time as program re-engineering, the data for the system may also be re-engineered. The re-engineering process includes the following activities. Source code translation, reverse engineering, program structure improvement, Program Modularization Data Source Code Translation In Source Code Translation, the programming language of an old program is converted into the modern version of the same language or to a new language. Reverse Engineering in reverse engineering, the program is analyzed and important and useful information is extracted from it which helps to document its functionality. Program Structure Improvement 
In program structure improvement, the control structure of the program is analyzed and modified to make it easier to read and understand. Program modularization. In program modularization, redundancy of any part is removed and related parts are grouped together. Data re-engineering. In data re-engineering, the data processed by the program is changed to reflect program changes. Software re-engineering process models. In this video, we are going to see about software re-engineering process model. Re-engineering of information system is an activity that will absorb information technology resources for many years. That is why every organization needs a pragmatic strategy for software re-engineering. Re-engineering is a rebuilding activity. To implement re-engineering principles, we apply a software re-engineering process model. The re-engineering paradigm shown in the figure is a cyclical model. There are six activities in the model. Inventory analysis. Document restructuring. Reverse engineering. Code restructuring data restructuring, forward engineering. Factors affecting re-engineering costs. In this video, we are going to see about factors affecting re-engineering costs. Factors that affect re-engineering costs include quality of software to be re-engineered. There is the inverse relationship between the quality and the cost of the software. Tools availability for re-engineering. It is not cost effective to re-engineer a software system unless you can use case tools to automate most of the program changes. Availability of expert staff. The re-engineering staff is not the same as the maintaining staff and this will increase costs. Extent of data conversion record. There is a direct relationship between the volume of data to be converted and the cost of the software. Difference between forward engineering and re-engineering. Forward Engineering and Re-Engineering Forward Engineering is distinguished from the software re-engineering. This distinction Forward Engineering starts with the system specification and involves the design and implementation of a new system. Re-Engineering starts with an existing system and the development process for the replacement is based on the understanding and transformation of the original system. Advantages and Disadvantages Re-engineering as a software system has two key advantages over more radical approaches to system evolution. Reduced Risk There is a high risk in redeveloping software that is essential for an organization. Errors may be made in the system specification, there may be developed problems, etc. Reduced cost. The cost of re-engineering is significantly less than the cost of developing new software. The main disadvantages of software re-engineering are The practical limits of the extent that a system can be improved by re-engineering. It is not possible, for example, to convert a system written using a functional approach to an object-oriented system. Major architectural changes of radical reorganizing of the system Data management cannot be carried out automatically, so involve high additional cost. Although re-engineering can improve maintainability, the re-engineering system will probably not be as maintainable as a new system development using modern software engineering methods. Cost 
configuration management issues for web apps. In this video, we are going to see about configuration management issues for web apps. As web apps become increasingly important to business survival and growth, the need for configuration management grows. Why? Because without effective controls, improper changes to a web app can lead to unauthorized posting of new product information. Erroneous or poorly tested functionality that frustrates visitors to a website, security holes that jeopardize internal company systems and other economically unpleasant or even disastrous consequences. The general strategies for software configuration management SCM are described but tactics and tools must be adapted to confirm the unique nature of web apps. Four issues should be considered when developing tactics for web app configuration management, content, people, scalability, and politics. Content People Scalability Politics Web app configuration objects Web apps encompass a broad range of configuration objects, content objects, for example, text, graphics, images, video, audio, functional components, for example, scripts, applets, and interface objects, for example, COM. Web app objects can be identified, assigned file names in any manner that is appropriate for the organization. However, the following conventions are recommended to ensure that cross-platform compatibility is maintained. File names should be limited to 32 characters in length. Mixed case or all caps names should be avoided and the use of underscores in file names should be avoided. In addition, URL references, that is, links within a configuration object should always use relative paths, for example, products, alarm sensors.html. All web app content has format and structure. Internal file formats are dictated by the computing environment in which the content is stored. However, rendering format, often called display format, is defined by the aesthetic style and design rules established for the web app. Content structure defines a content architecture, that is, it defines the way in which content objects are assembled to present meaningful information to an end user. Content management In this video, we are going to see about content management. Content management is related to configuration management in the sense that a content management system CMS establishes a process supported by appropriate tools that acquires existing content from a broad array of web app configuration objects, structures it in a way that enables it to be presented to an end user and then provides it to the client's environment for display. The most common use of content management system occurs when a dynamic web app is built. Dynamic web apps create web pages on the fly, that is, the user typically queries the web app requesting specific information. The web app queries a database, formats the information accordingly and presents it to the user. For example, a music company provides a library of CDs for sale. When a user requests a CD or its e-music equivalent, a database is queried and a variety of information about the artist, the CD, for example, its cover image or graphics, the musical content, and sample audio are all downloaded and configured into a standard content template. The resultant web page is built on the server side and passed to the client side browser for examination by the end user. 
A generic representation is shown in figure. In the most general sense, a CMS configures content for the end user by invoking three integrated subsystems. A collection subsystem, a management subsystem and a publishing subsystem. The collection subsystem. Content is derived from data and information that must be created or acquired by a content developer. The collection subsystem encompasses all actions required to create and or acquire content and the technical functions that are necessary to convert content into a form that can be represented by a markup language, for example, HTML, XML and organize content into packets that can be displayed effectively on the client side. The management subsystem once content exists, it must be stored in a repository, catalogued for subsequent acquisition and use, and labeled to define current status. For example, is the content object complete or in development? The appropriate version of the content object and related content objects. Therefore, the management subsystem implements a repository that encompasses the following elements. Content database. The information structure that has been established to store all content objects. Database capabilities. Functions that enable the CMS to search for specific content objects or categories of objects, store and retrieve objects and manage the file structure that has been established for the content. Configuration management. The functional elements and associated workflow that support content object identification, version control, change management, change auditing and reporting. In addition to these elements, the management subsystem implements an administration function that encompasses the metadata and rules that control the overall structure of the content and the manner in which it is supported. The publishing subsystem Content must be extracted from the repository, converted to a form that is amenable to publication and formatted so that it can be transmitted to client-side browsers. The publishing subsystem accomplishes these tasks using a series of templates. Each template is a function that builds a publication using one of three different components. Static elements Text, Graphics, Media and scripts that require no further processing or transmitted directly to the client side. Publication services Function calls to specific retrieval and formatting services that personalize content using predefined rules, perform data conversion and build appropriate navigation links. External services Provide access to external corporate information infrastructure such as enterprise data or backroom applications. A content management system that encompasses each of these subsystems is applicable for major web engineering projects. However, the basic philosophy or functionality associated with the CMS are applicable to all dynamic web apps. Class 3 a content or function change that has broad impact across a web app, for example, major extension of functionality, significant enhancement or reduction in content, major required changes in navigation. Class 4 A major design change, for example, a change in interface design or navigation approach that will be immediately noticeable to one or more categories of user. Once a requested change has been categorized, it can be processed according to the algorithm shown in figure. Referring to the figure, class 1 and 2 changes are treated informally and are handled in an agile manner. For a class 1 change, the web engineer evaluates the impact of the change but no external review or documentation is required. As the change is made, standard check-in and check-out procedures are established.
in an uncontrolled site where multiple authors have access to edit and contribute the potential for conflict and problems arises more so when these authors work from different offices at different times of day and night you may spend the day improving the file index.html for a customer after you have made your changes another developer who works at home after hours or in another office may spend the night uploading their own newly revised version of the file index.html completely overwriting your work with no way to get it back This situation should sound familiar to every software engineer as well as every web engineer. To avoid it, a version control process should be established. A central repository for the web app project should be established. The repository will hold current versions of all web app configuration objects, content, functional components and others. Each web engineer creates his or her own working folder. The folder contains those objects that is being created or changed at any given time. The clocks on all developer workstation should be synchronized. This is done to avoid overriding conflicts when two developers make updates that are very close to one another in time. As new configuration objects are developed or existing objects are changed, they are imported into the central repository. The version control tool will make all check-in and check-out functions from the working folders of each engineer. As objects are imported or exported from the repository, an automatic timestamped log message is made. This provides useful information for auditing and can become part of an effective reporting scheme. The version control tool maintains different versions of the web app and can revert to an older version if required. Configuration Management Planning In this video, we are going to see about Configuration Management Planning. Configuration management takes over control of systems after they have been developed. However, planning this management process must start during system development. A configuration management plan should be developed as part of the overall project planning process. The configuration management plan includes the following information. The definition of what entities are to be managed and a formal scheme for identifying these entities. The statement of who takes responsibility for the configuration management procedures and for submitting controlled entities to the configuration management team. The configuration management policies which are used for change control and version management. A description of the records of the configuration management process which should be maintained. A description of the tools to be used for configuration management and the process to be applied when using these tools. A definition of the configuration database which will be used to record configuration information. Other information such as the management of software from external suppliers and the CM process auditing procedures may also be included in the CM plan. An important part of the CM plan is the definition of responsibilities. It should define who is responsible for the delivery of each document or software component to quality assurance and configuration management. It may also define the reviewers of each document. The person responsible for document delivery need not to be the same as the person responsible for producing the document. To simplify interfaces, it is often convenient to make project managers or team leaders responsible for all of the documents produced by their team. Configuration Management Technique In this video, we are going to see about Configuration Management Technique. 
In the course of developing a large software system, thousands of documents are produced. Many of these are technical working documents which present a snapshot of ideas for further development. These documents are subject to frequent and regular change. Others are inter-office memos, minutes of group meetings, outline plans and proposals, and so on. These documents may be of interest to a project historian. However, they are not required for future maintenance of the system. A key task of the configuration management planning is to decide exactly which items or classes of item ought to be controlled. Documents or group of related documents under configuration control or formal documents or configuration items. Project plan, specifications, designs, programs and test data suits are normally maintained as configuration items. However, all documents which may be necessary for future system maintenance should be controlled. The document's naming scheme must assign a unique name to all documents under configuration control. There will be relationships between documents. For example, design documents will be associated with programs. These relationships can be recorded implicitly by organizing the naming schemes so that related documents have a common root to their name. This leads to a hierarchical naming scheme where examples of names might be PCL, Tools, Edit, Forms, Display, AST Interface, Code. PCL, Tool, Edit, Help, Query, Help Frames, FR1. These names have a number of components. The initial part of the name is the project name, PCL Tools. In this project, there are four separate tools. The tool name is used as the next part of the name. Each of these tools is made up of different named modules. This decomposition process continues until the base level formal documents. The leaves of the documentation hierarchy are the formal project documents. The three formal documents are required for each managed entity. These are an object description that is objects that code of the component that is code and a set of tests for that code test. The problem with naming schemes of this sort is that they are project-based. Components are identified as being associated with a particular project. This may reduce the opportunities for reuse. Copies of reusable components should normally be taken out of such a scheme and renamed according to their application domain. Other problem may arise if the document naming scheme is used as a direct basis for designing a file storage structure. This may cause problems because documents may have to be retrieved and classified using attributes which are not released to CM. The description of this formal document identification scheme is itself a critical project document as it is used to generate unique document identifiers. Therefore, the name definition procedure should itself be placed under configuration control. It should not be changed in an arbitrary way. Software versions in this video, we are going to see about software versions. During the process of software evolution, many objects are produced, for example, files, electronic documents, paper documents, source code, executable code, and bitmap graphics. A version control tool is the first stage towards being able to manage multiple versions. Once it is in place, a detailed record of every version of the software must be kept. This comprises 
this comprises the name of each source code component including the variations and revisions the versions of the various compilers and linkers used the name of the software staff who constructed the component the date and the time at which it was constructed the evolutionary graph depicts the evolution of a configuration item during the development life cycle the initial version of the item is given by version number ver 1.0 the subsequent changes to the item which could be mostly fixing bugs or adding minor functionality is given as version 1.1 and version 1.2 After that, a major modification to version 1.2 is given a number version 2.0 at the same time. A parallel version of the same item without the major modification is maintained and given a version number 1.3. Commercial tools are available for version control which perform one or more of the following tasks. Source code control, revision control, concurrent version control. There are many commercial tools like Rational Clear Case, Microsoft Visual Source Safe, and a number of other commercial tools to help version control. Change Control Process In this video, we are going to see about Change Control Process. Change control is vital. But the forces that make it necessary also make it annoying. We worry about change because a tiny perturbation in the code can create a big failure in the product. But it can also fix a big failure or enable wonderful new capabilities. We worry about the change because a single rogue developer could sink the project. A brilliant ideas originate in the minds of those rogues and a burdensome change control process could effectively discourage them from doing creative work. For a lot software engineering project, uncontrolled change rapidly leads to chaos. For such projects, change control combines human procedures and automated tools. The change control process is illustrated schematically in figure. A change request is submitted and evaluated to assess technical merit, potential side effects, overall impact on other configuration objects and system functions and the projected cost of the change. The results of the evaluation are presented as a change report which is used by a change control authority CCA, a person or group who makes a final decision on the status and priority of the change. An engineering change order ECO is generated for each approved change. The ECO describes the change to be made, the constraints that must be respected and the criteria for review and audit. The objects to be changed can be placed in a directory that is controlled solely by the software engineer making the change. A version control system updates the original file once the change has been made. As an alternative, the objects to be changed can be checked out of the project database repository. The change is made and appropriate SQA activities are applied. The objects are then checked in to the database and appropriate version control mechanisms are used to create the next version of the software. These version control mechanisms integrated within the change control process implement two important elements of change management access control and synchronization control. Access control governs which software engineers have the authority to access and modify a particular configuration object. Synchronization control helps to ensure the parallel changes performed by two different people don't overwrite one another.
Some readers may begin to feel uncomfortable with the level of bureaucracy implied by the change control process description. This feeling is not uncommon. Without safeguards, change control can retard progress and create unnecessary red tape. Most software developers who have change control mechanisms, unfortunately may have none, have created a number of layers of control to help avoid the problems. Prior to an SCI becoming a baseline, only informal change control need to be applied. The developer of the configuration object SCI in question may make whatever changes are justified by the project and technical requirements. Once the project has undergone formal and technical review and has been approved, a baseline can be created. Once a SEA becomes a baseline, project level change control is implemented. Now, to make a change, the developer must gain approval from the project manager. In some cases, the formal generation of change requests, change reports and ECOs is dispensed with. However, assessment of each change is conducted and all changes are tracked and reviewed. When the software product is released to customers, formal change control is instituted. The formal change control procedure has been outlined in the figure. The change control authority plays an active role in the second and third layers of control. Depending on the size and character of a software project, the CCA may be composed of one person, the project manager, or a number of people, for example, representatives from software, hardware, database engineering, support, marketing. The role of the CCA is to take a global view, that is, to assess the impact of the change beyond the SCA in question. How will the change affect hardware? How will the change affect performance? How will the change modify the customer's perception of the product? How will the change affect product quality and reliability? Documentation In this video, we are going to see about documentation. Properly produced and maintained system documentation is a tremendous aid to maintenance engineers. The system documentation includes all of the documents describing the implementation of the system from the requirement specification to the final acceptance test plan. Documents which may be produced to aid the maintenance process include The requirements document and an associated rationale. A document describing the overall system architecture. For each program in the system, a description of the architecture of the program. For each component, a specification and design description. Program source code listings which should be commented. If meaningful names are used and go-tos are avoided, much of the code should be self-documenting with no need for explanatory comments. Program comments need only to explain complex section of the code and provide a rationale for the coding method used. Validation documents describing how each program is validated and how the validation information relates to the requirements. A system maintenance guide that describes known problems with the system and that describes which parts of the system are hardware and software dependent. The guide should also explain how evolution of the system has been taken into account in its design. System documentation should be structured with overviews leading the reader into more formal and detailed descriptions of each aspect of the system. It is important that documents are clear and readable otherwise they will not be used.
while the standard of the presentation need not match that of the user manuals it must be at such a level that readers are not discouraged by poor grammar spelling and document layout Whenever possible, document production should be tool assisted. A significant benefit of using case systems to support the development process is lower cost in producing system documentation. It can often be generated automatically from the case system repository. Even when this is impossible, a document template or outline may be produced, which is then filled in by the system documenter.